Hi, this is Mike from Memaception.com and in this video I explain how encryption is used to ensure the integrity of data or a document. I have illustrated again on the right side the terms data, algorithm and key and we will use these three terms to guide us. Integrity means that the data must be verified to be complete and unchanged. For example, if a PDF document is digitally signed, then the text must not change. Likewise, no letters or words may be removed or added. Even spelling corrections may no longer be made because these also change the text and therefore make the digital signature invalid. The content of the document doesn't need to be secret. With a digital signature, however, we want to ensure that the integrity of the document is protected. A manipulation on the content of the document can usually not be prevented, but a digital signature must detect any changes. A digital signature must be able to verify it by anyone. So if our PDF document has been signed, then it must be possible to verify it. Okay, let's assume that the PDF document has been created by Alice and it's to be sent to Bob. Now, she wants to sign it with a digital signature. To do this, first, a hash value must be calculated over the document. At least SHA-256 is currently recommended as a hash isorhythm and the result is a fingerprint of the document. The integrity of a document can only be ensured using a hash isorhythm that is considered secure. That's why I use at least SHA-256 here, because its predecessor SHA-1 is no longer considered secure since the year 2008. From time to time, hash isorhythms have to be updated. This means that in a few years, SHA-384 will be recommended and SHA-256 will no longer be considered secure enough. The hash value from the document is then encrypted asymmetrically, for example, with the RSA isorhythm. The result is a digital signature. To do this, however, Alice must have an asymmetric key pair, in this case, one for RSA 2048. The hash value is then encrypted with her private key. When Bob receives the document, he must also be able to check whether it has been manipulated. To do this, he also calculates a hash value for the document. In this case, 
he must use the same hash algorithm as Alice in our example SHA-256. Next, Bob must be able to decrypt the encrypted hash value. To do this, he needs Alice's public key. This key is not secret and is usually taken from her digital certificate. He must also use the same asymmetric algorithm RSA-2048. As a result, he receives a hash value and compares it with his own calculation. If both are identical, then the document has not been changed. Of course, Bob needs information again about which algorithms Alice used. In order to verify the digital signature, Bob must use the same algorithms so that the verification can be successful. What actually happens when Mallory also receives the signed document? Well, he can manipulate both the content itself and the signature. This usually cannot be prevented, but the digital signature must make it possible to detect this. If Mallory changes the content of the document and then sends it to Bob, Bob's hash value comparison must fail. This is because the manipulation causes Bob to calculate a different hash value than else. But what happens if Mallory also creates his own signature? In example, encrypts the new hash value with his own key pair. Bob then detects the manipulation because the encrypted hash value can no longer be decrypted with Alice's public key. Okay, let's summarize. In digital signatures, two technologies are essential. One is the hash value calculation. A unique fingerprint is calculated over the document. Here we have used SHA-256 as an example. This algorithm is currently still considered secure. The other, we used RSA-2048 as the asymmetric algorithm so that the hash value is encrypted in a secure way. This results in a digital signature. This algorithm is also currently still considered secure. The requirements for a valid signature are an asymmetric key pair and a digital certificate. Alice has to get both of these first. However, there are also providers for electronic signatures such as Adobe Sign, where it works more simply. Adobe Sign makes it easy to send, track and collect electronic signatures. Once you have an account there, you can sign a PDF document with a click of a mouse. You can also get signatures from other people who also have an account there. The advantage is that you don't need an asymmetric key pair. The hash value over the PDF document is encrypted by Adobe. A digital certificate is also provided by Adobe. The condition is, of course, that you have an account there and that Adobe can identify you as a person or company.